Hey guys, welcome back to Not From Here. I hope you guys are doing well. Each and every one of us belongs to a certain group or several groups. You know, you have your religion, you have your work, you have your school, what you're interested in, your hobbies, what you do for fun. Those are the things that make you you. And you have a lot of people inside you that have these things in common and you have people that don't have them in common, that have different things they're interested in. They have different jobs. They have a different religion. So now you can see how people are divided into groups, into small groups. And it's, it's not something weird that each and every one of us has their own thing going on. And the sum of all these small groups is what makes society. And this isn't something new. This is a thing that has been around for a very long time. These groups were called tribes back back in the day. And we were raised on this division of each person. Like, you belong here, you belong here. I still remember when I used to tell my dad that I met someone new. He used to say, Min jama'atna, which translates to, is he from our group? That's just how the way we have been raised. This is how the way that even society is just divided like that. And it's not a bad type. When I say divided, I'm not saying that it's a bad type of division. This is good variety. You need people to have different views and different opinions. And that's what makes it work the way it does. Psychologists wanted to know why is it that we feel the urge to join certain groups or leave certain groups? Why do we prefer this group over that group? And after a lot of research... Psychologist named Henry Tashfeld in the 1970s came out with the social identity theory. And there's three stages to this theory. It's categorization, identification, and comparison. We're going to break them down. So first, let's start with categorization. This happens naturally. You don't think about it when you're doing this. So let's say you walk into a room with 100 people. The first thing you start doing is you scan the room and automatically you start putting each person in their own category based on race, based on religion. There's a bunch of different factors, but you know what I mean. You're going to be able to tell that this group is this. You give them a name, Muslim, Jews, Christian. Maybe it's, it's a sports lobby. You know these are the fans for this team. You, know, you get the point. The second step is identification. And that doesn't have to do anything with the people that you just categorized that has everything to do with you. So now you say, okay, where do I belong to? Or which group do I belong to? And this happens for a couple of reasons. We have this urge that we need to belong somewhere. We have to belong to a certain group. We need people around us that will make us feel validated. You hear a lot of people say that they don't need outside validation and they're good by themselves and they don't need anyone. That's all false. There's something called the hierarchy of needs and it was brought forth by psychologist Abraham Maslow in 1943. Basically, this hierarchy tells you what the human being needs to survive from the most important to the least important, but in that order. And where I'm not going to go over the whole hierarchy, but it starts with your basic needs which are your, the food, the air that you breathe, everything like you physically need to stay alive. And after that is safety. And that's, for example, the house that you live in, just to be somewhere where you feel safe. And the third one is love and belonging. So it's your basic needs, your safety, and then love and belonging before anything else. And that shows you how important that aspect of human interaction is or like human life is. To the person, you you need these people around you. You need these people that will help you feel validated. And when people talk about how it's bad to always seek outside validation, outside validation, we usually talk about the extremes. Like when you're in extreme need of outside validation and you have no way to actually self-validate and get that self-love and appreciation... There's an issue, but for the most part, every single human being needs validation Every from another human being. Every single person needs appreciation from another human being. You want to feel like there is people like you outside. You feel good when you're in a group or when you belong to a group of people that make you feel good. 
that put out positivity and what makes me feel good may be different than what makes you feel good it's situational it depends from person to person it, it differs regardless i need to find a group that will make me feel good and that will make me feel happy when i sit with them and you have to do the same and we also like to be a part of groups that are doing well groups are, that are winning you see this with uh, sports teams a lot when a sports team is winning there's a term that's called the uh, bandwagon fan and that is basically that you see a team that is winning and then you automatically switch and become a fan of that team just because they're winning. It's this it's like that because of the social identity theory that yeah, we do like to belong to someone that is to a group that is performing well, that is doing well. They made an, they did an experiment since we're talking about sports and they asked a university university students when their team won when the university's team won like why did you guys win and they said we did very well they identified with the group as they are part of that group and when that university team lost they asked them why did you guys lose and they said they performed very bad and it just shows you that when a group is performing well we tend to identify that like that is where we are too but when they're not performing well, we like to take a step back because we don't want to be on the losing side ever. And the last stage of the social identity theory is comparison, is when you compare your group to another group and it's that bias that you feel towards your group and that you guys are superior. And that is what us versus them, that's the us versus them mentality. When you feel like you are favoring your own people, your own group, Versus the other group. You see this, for example, on the news when someone comes out and says immigrants are taking all of our jobs. Okay, so this person identified them, like the jobs, as regardless that the statement is wrong or not true. We're not talking about that. But he's, the person said our jobs. So he already has a group, uh, a group of people that have had those jobs. And the, there's that group that is against them Which are the immigrants that took their jobs And this isn't Again a new mentality That's how tribes used to fight back in the day When a tribe had the resources And another tribe came To take those resources It was the us versus them mentality We've had this mentality for a very long time All the major conflicts in history You could simplify them And it would be one group Versus another group and this group believed in something and the other one didn't believe in the same thing and they fought that's just how it that's just how it was the social identity theory basically just helps you a little bit understand why people are doing the things that they're doing and how they came came up to this conclusion like you start thinking about stereotypes you think about one group that heard a stereotype about their opposing group of course they're going to believe it it's in their benefit it's in their favor to, because i'm i'm talking about like obviously stereotypes in general aren't the best you know they're they're not usually good traits some of them are some of them are but i'm talking about like the bad traits of course i'm going to believe that stereotype because if i'm part of this group and i don't like this group and it's an opposing group to me they have different beliefs I want to believe the bad things about them so I can feel better about my group and that my group is right. And that's how society works. That's why we are divided the way we're divided. Although you can make the argument that we are more similar than we are different and that as a society, we do have a common goal to be better, to elevate everyone's lifestyle and how everyone is living. And when you think about it like that, but then you see how society actually is and it's not the case. We can say that everyone in, everyone in this community wants the best for everyone else. But when you see how people act, you get the quick impression that, no, that's not the case. Then, then we are still divided way more than we think we do. But all in all, like I said in the beginning, having different groups and having this variety and this mix in, in our societies and our communities isn't a bad thing. I think it's very important. And I can't see myself living in a place where everyone has the exact like no conflict at all like we're not going to disagree on anything 
I, I, I just don't see a world where that is ever the case And it, I don't think it, it ever should be the case But anyways, that was the social identity theory I hope that you guys identified with this podcast And with this episode And you are a part of the Not From Here group Thank you guys for listening Talk to you guys next week Assalamu alaikum